This series of videos gives you quick exercises that you can use to get good at Blender. They're designed as challenges, so you see a model and you have to try and recreate it. They either get increasingly difficult or they introduce a new skill each time. This way you're not only learning, but you're practicing the skills. So let's start nice and easy with this model. A nice easy table to start you off. They are all separate objects. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with this. I'll select them all. G to grab and the Y axis to move it across a bit and create a new one over here. So Shift A to add, or you can have the add menu up here, mesh and then cube. And I'll press S to scale and tap Z to constrain it to the Z axis until it's the right thickness. And then I'll go to top view with seven on my numpad. or you can use the Cartesian coordinates over here and scale in the Y and the X and just move it into position. So it's roughly the same size as my other tabletop. So simple scaling there using the S key. Let's take a look at the table legs. In fact, I'll just press G to grab in the Z axis, hold down shift this time to move it in small increments. So it's roughly the same size. So the table legs, once again, it's a cube, but there's a taper at the bottom. Hopefully you noticed that. So I'll press shift right click to move my 3D cursor into position and shift A to add mesh and then cube once again. And again, scale it right down. I'll make it nice and small this time. Go into front view with one on my keyboard. Let's zoom into that area and move it into position. So probably somewhere around here. I can either extend it by pressing S to scale, or I can go into edit mode now and bring out the bottom face. So I can press tab to go into edit mode, or that's edit mode up here. So that of course means I can start editing the shape of this object. Now, if I try and select the vertices now by box selecting, I only select the front as you can see there. So in front view, I'll want to turn either wireframe on or solid view with X-ray. I prefer X-ray and the shortcut key for this is Alt Z. Now I can select the bottom vertices and I've got the ones in the background as well. And then press G to grab in the Z axis, bring those down to the floor and then scale them in. So I've got one table leg. All I need to do now is duplicate this. That's easiest in top view. So seven on my numpad. And before you duplicate it, do make sure that you go back into object mode. So back into object mode or tab into object mode. And for duplicating, I've got two options. You can see these both in the object menu. There's duplicate objects with shift D or duplicate linked with alt D. Now alt D is better in this occasion because it will be a linked duplicate. Therefore, anything I do in edit mode to any of the linked objects will update on all the others. So I'll do just that. I'll press alt D and then Y. So I'll move it up in the Y axis and I'll be fairly rough with this. I'll select the other one down here. But notice it was a bit awkward. I had to select the table. You can hold down control and box select the table to get rid of anything that you don't want selected. And I'll press Alt D once again, and this time in the X axis and bring those across. So they're roughly in the same position as the other ones. So that link duplicate means that, let's say I go back to this one, back to edit mode with tab and want to make the taper slightly more. I can scale those in and you can see it's updating on all the others. I could then add some loop cuts with Control R, let's say a loop cut here, and then scale that out to have some strange legs if I wanted to. But I'll undo that because that looks silly. Okay, so I'll press Alt Z to go back into solid view. And also what I'm going to quickly do is in the drop-down menu here, I'm just going to turn on cavity and change this to both. That way you'll see the objects a little bit more clearly. Lastly, it's a good idea when you've got an object like this that has different parts, but is one object to put them into a collection. So I'll select all by box selecting M to move to new collection, new collection, and I'll call this table two. So we've got two tables. Your next object to model then is this chair here. And you'll notice this is all one object. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll zoom out a bit and I'll just quickly show my table again. That way I can use the tabletop because it's the same kind of thickness as the chair here. So it's a tiny bit quicker to create rather than adding a new cube and scaling that down. Not a lot in it, but that's how I would model for speed. So Shift D to duplicate, I'll bring it over here this time and scale, but Shift Z so it doesn't scale the Z axis, somewhere around here and then scale in the X axis. So we've got a similar sized chair. Let's go to front view, bring that down. So it's the same height and you can tuck it under the table about there and scale in the Z so it's got the same sort of thickness. I'll zoom into this object with period key on a numpad. You can also find that under view, frame selected. And we're going to need some loop cuts across here and across here for the chair legs. So into edit mode, 
with tab. It's a little bit tricky to get these to line up, but there are some things that will help you. If I press Ctrl R to do my first loop cut across the middle here, use the wheel of my mouse to create two and then left click twice, one to set the loop cuts and two to set the position. I now have a set of loop cuts here. I'll go into edge mode. It's a little bit easier to control. Alt left click to select one of the edge loops and then shift Alt left click to select the second one. And if I go to top view now, I can scale this in the Y, so S then Y and move those outwards to somewhere around here. This method keeps them even. Do the same for the other side. So Control R, use the wheel of my mouse, left click twice. Now I accidentally moved those slightly so I can reposition them just by resetting the factor to zero. Make sure they're right in the center and then scale these in the X. Now I could probably find a way to be even more accurate, getting these to be precisely the same size. I could use a mirror modifier and all sorts, but is it really necessary? For the sake of speed, you probably wouldn't have noticed that these chair legs may be very slightly different sizes. So you've got to sometimes think whether those minute details are important if it's going to take you a lot longer when modeling. Okay, so at this point, I can come around to the bottom here, go to face mode with three, that's face mode up here, and then select the faces. Come to front view with one, E to extrude, and bring those down in the Z axis. Now, if I press S to scale to taper those in, they all come together like so. So I'll undo that. What I need to do is come up to the middle here, and change the transform pivot point to individual origins. That way when I press S to scale, that will move them in by each face's individual origin. So somewhere around there, I think works well. So back up to the top now, I'll extrude these out. Now you might be tempted to go to the top here and then do a loop cut, move it up, and then a loop cut the other side. But for the sake of accuracy, I'll undo that and extrude them up halfway and then extrude them up again, that way, I know that this loop cut and this loop cut are the same height. I can then select this face here and this face here. And I'll use the bridge edge loop command. So you can find that under the edge menu, bridge edge loops, or you can actually press control E to get to that menu, bridge edge loops. And that's a great command because it will fill it in, but it will also, if I go to wireframe mode, delete those inside faces. So back to solid view and we've created a simple chair. Now the very slight problem with this is because I copied from the tabletop here, this object is in my table collection. So if I open up my table collection, you can see it just there. I'll rename it chair three, I think I'm on now, and then move it out of the collection just into my main collection here. Okay, so let's take a look at the next object. So we've got this chair, but it's got an extra strut in the middle here. Now, of course, we're going to need some loop cuts in here and you can link them up by eye if you like, but I'd like you to try and be fairly accurate just for this one, just for the sake of practice. So pause the video and have a go at adding this strut into your chair. If you like the style of learning, you might be interested in one of my courses, or if you're dreaming of a career in 3D art, my eight week intensive program takes you from absolute beginner to indie studio ready in just two months. You'll learn essential skills, build up a strong portfolio and be ready to launch your 3D art career. There's limited spots available and you can find out more in the link in the description. Okay, so with my chair selected back into edit mode and let's zoom in. I can press Control R, do a loop cut this side, and I'll double left click. So that's set in place and it's not moved. Same with the other side. And then I can select both these edge loops. So that's Shift, Alt, Left Click to select the other edge loop. And I can press either G to grab in the Z axis to move it up, or I can use the command Edge Slide, which is G twice, GG. And I can move that up to here. Now you might think of adding another loop cut and bringing that up. So we've got a face on the inside here, but I'll undo that. Instead, I'm going to use the bevel command here. So control B to bevel, and I can bring this out. Use the wheel of your mouse to get rid of any loop cuts that you need to, or create some more if you wanted to, but we don't need any extra cuts. I'll bring it out to around about here and left click. I'll just minimize this dialog box as it's a bit distracting, but of course you can change the bevel around in lots of different ways. So now I can select this face. Oh, let's go to face mode. This face here and this face here, and then control E to get to the edge menu. That's the edge menu up here and bridge edge loops. And then I've got my extra strut in there. And I know it's exactly the same position, one side to the other. Okay, so that's the first exercise complete. You've now got a nice table and chairs and you can obviously duplicate the chair. Make sure you use Alt D if you want it to be a linked duplicate and create a set of chairs around your table. You might want to save your work here as in the next exercise, I'll be using the same scene.